Mike Cormier of the band FMP, also known as Forward Momentum Prophecy. We're a death metal band out of Central Maine. I've uh, landed a gig with another band, and I just wanted to go over with you the uh, simple beats and techniques that I use to uh, get into the band. Uh, this band is called the Zach Daniels Band um, out of Thompson, Maine. Mostly play uh, Lewis and Auburn area. And they mostly play classic rock, and so I've had to adjust my playing and, and do different techniques than normal in order to get the gig. And so I'm going to go over just some four simple beats, well, three simple beats and one semi-simple beat that I've learned uh, and that were useful during the audition and uh, simple techniques that helped me, um, you know, play the style correctly and get the gig. All right, so this first beat is basically the simplest beat in rock. Uh, it is the bass drum on the one and the three, so the down beats, uh, a snare on the two and the four, and you play eighth notes on the hi-hat, so one and two and three and four and and you basically, it's the most common beat, and you should play it a lot so you can change up your dynamics on it and change up the way you play it. Uh, I'm going to loop it for about a minute for you. Okay, so as you can see, it's a very simple beat, and like I said before, it's not going to matter so much. Um, but obviously, it's going to matter that you can play it, but what's going to matter over time even more is how you play it and what kind of dynamics you add to it. So basically, wallet on the snare drum, that's what I did during the audition, uh, dries up the snare, makes you not quite so overwhelming. And the other thing I'm going to do... Uh, when playing this beat is instead of hitting the snare on the two and the four, I'm going to hit the rim and do rim instead. And you want to find the right spot on the stick where you want to hit the rim. So if it's too, too high, it's got a weird sound. If it's too low, it kind of has a blocky sound like you're hitting a jam block. So you want to be somewhere in the middle. Okay? Let's try that again for about one minute. Okay, so basically that was so you could see the difference in dynamics uh, going on. Uh, obviously, when you're hitting the rim of the snare, you're just kind of going. It's a lot less loud than. Okay, so the next one is basically the same exact beat, except we're going to put a bass on the and of three. 
Okay, so now we're going to play basically the same beat as before, but we're going to put a bass drum on the end of three. So it's going to be bass drum on the one, bass drum on the three, and the end of three. And then we're going to keep the snare on the two and the four. And I'm going to go back to playing the snare normally. Okay, so basically it's a uh, bass drum on the down beats, snare drum on the back beats, you know, the two and the four, uh, bass drum on the one and the three. Uh, this one we're going to leave out the bass drum on the three, and instead we're going to put it on the end of three. So we end up having a bass drum hit just before the snare on the four. Uh, this one's a little more syncopated. Uh, what I do to kind of help me keep in time for it is I hit the hi-hat a little bit harder on the three where I want to put a bass drum, but I'm supposed to leave it out. So it'll be one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. I'll demonstrate it for you right now. Okay, so, you know, those are kind of your bread and butter drum beats. Um, a lot of times when I was in the audition and I didn't know the song that well, if I went with one of those three beats, I was good. And the next one I'm going to show you is a little more intermediate, a little more difficult. Uh, certainly not, you know, expert level, but I'd probably say a more intermediate level uh, drum beat. Uh, it's uh, accented. It's basically, you know, you still have the bass drum on the one, you still have the snare on the two, but then you're going to put a snare on the ah of two. So now you've got to count out 16th notes. So one E and ah, uh, two E and ah. Uh. Then you have a hi-hat on the three, but no bass drum on the three. But you have a bass drum on the and of three, just like the beat we played before and then a snare shot on the four, a normal snare shot. So basically it's almost identical to the beat we just played except that we're putting a, a snare just before beat three. So if you were playing with a click track, the snare would almost sound like it was on with the three but just a tiny bit before. And that's really how you can know that you're staying in time. It's not on the three, it's just before the three. Okay, I'll demonstrate it for you right now.
Okay, so there you have it. Basically, four beats that I went over. Three of them, very simple. Uh, the third one does will have some difficulty with uh, some beginners, but it's definitely a good idea to go through it slowly and learn it and build up your speed with it, uh, work with it uh, with a click track. Normally, I do practice with a click track, but as you can see, I'm on my acoustic kit right now, and... I kind of play loud to the point where I can't hear my click while I'm playing my acoustic, so I end up getting lost. Uh, definitely a good idea, though, to get an electrical drum kit, electronic drum kit, uh, with a click track built in, and, you know, work with it every single day, I'd say at least 20 minutes. And if you're going to work on drums for only 20 minutes, let's say, you know, you got 20 minutes of spare time before work. I would suggest working on one beat or one solo or, you know, one fill concept the entire time. Don't keep mo moving around and uh, skipping ahead and, and going back and forth. Just, you know, really focus on one thing and try to master it and get better at it in that 20 minutes. So a lot of looping is a good thing. Okay, so uh, I guess I'm going to end my lesson with a drum solo, and uh, thank you for watching.
Mike Cormier. This is the beat of the day. It's going to be very similar to the beat that I went over in my last lesson, uh, where we had a bass drum on the and of three. So it was a bass drum on the one, the and of three, but no bass drum on the three, and snare on the two and the four. Uh, in this beat, it's bass drum on the one, the and of three, but also the and of two, and a snare on the two and the four as usual. So usual backbeat, but the bass drum pattern is a little different. I'll demonstrate it for you now. Okay, so again, I'm Mike, the drummer of FMP, and this is the beat of the day. Alright, this beat is a little different from the last one. We're going to have a bass drum on the one, a bass drum on the two, bass drum on the and of three, and a snare on the four, but no snare on the two. So this is the first beat that really has a different, it doesn't have a backbeat, basically. Uh, it's a very odd beat. Well, it is 4-4, four, four, but it is strange in that you don't have a snare on the 2 or anywhere near the 2. And I believe if you play it enough, it can kind of help you with learning odd time and, and awkward beats that don't fall into the mainstream. So I'll demonstrate it for you now. I'm Mike Cormier, and this is the beat of the day. Alright, this beat is a groove-fill combination, and basically, you're going to play one measure of the first beat that I went over in my lesson for September 2015, and that's the bass drum on the one and the three, snare on the two and four, hi-hats doing eights. So, very, very simple beat. I'm going to do one measure of that, and then you're going to follow up with one of the simplest fills in rock, and that's just four sixteenths on the snare, high tom, mid tom, low tom. So it's going to be one E and a, uh, two E and a, uh, three E and a, uh, four E and a, uh, boom. Okay? So make sure that you crash on the one when you go back to the groove after the fill. And one thing I would suggest is doing open rolls with your hands on the fill. So you're going 1 E and a, uh, 2 E and a, uh, 3 E and a, uh, 4 E and a. Uh. So instead of going 1, 2, 3, 4 single strokes, do double strokes. 1 E and a. Uh. I think that'll help you uh, increase the speed of your open rolls. So I'll demonstrate it for you now.
Okay, so that was my, uh, in the previous lesson I did my first uh, groove and fill combination. And I did, you know, the easiest groove that you can have in rock music, which is bass drum on the one and the three, snare on the two and the four, eighth notes on the hi-hat. And then I followed up with the easiest fill, and that's, you know, four sixteenths on the snare, then the high tom, mid tom, low tom. And the only thing I really did to change it up was I did open rolls on the fill. So I was going one E and uh, instead of one E and uh. uh. For the next beat, it's basically the same thing, except we're going to put a snare on the end of three. So, I mean, a bass on the end of three. So we're going to have a bass on the one, the three, the end of three, a snare on the two and the four. Same eighth notes combination on the hi-hat. And then for the fill, we're going to have four sixteenths on the snare, two eighth notes on the high, high tom, four sixteenths on the mid tom, and two on the floor tom. And it's a good exercise because you're going to find it much more difficult than the first groove fill combination I did in the last lesson. When you change up your note patterns in a fill, it makes it so you have to kind of have a better timing for the fill. Like it's so much easier to play a fill that's the same 16th note pattern throughout than to play a fill that has starts out 16th and goes to 8th notes and maybe triplet 8ths and back to 16ths. That's a much more diff difficult fill. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate now. Again, it's bass drum on the 1, the 3, the and of 3, snare on the 2 and the 4, and then on the fill, it's the same thing as the one we did yesterday, except 4 16ths, 2 eighths. 4 sixteenths, 2 eighths, 8 notes. And again, I will be doing open rolls, so I'll demonstrate it for you now. Okay, so in yesterday's lesson, we basically just incorporated an extra bass drum note in the groove, and instead of playing straight sixteenths throughout the fill, we did four sixteenths, then two eighths, four sixteenths, then two eighths. Uh, this fill, we're going to reverse it, so it's going to be two sixteenths, I mean two eighth notes on the snare, four sixteenth notes on the high tom. Two eighth notes in the mid tom, four sixteenth notes in the floor tom. And the beat is going to be the third beat that I taught you on the lesson for September 2015, and that's a bass drum on the one, snare on the two, no bass drum on the three, but on the end of three, and then snare on the four. Okay? So I'll try to demonstrate it for you right now.
I'm Mike, the drummer of FMP. <clears throat> For this beat, it's going to be <clears throat> the same exact groove as I taught in the first lesson for September 2015, the drum lesson. So bass drum on the one and the three, snare on the two and the four. We're then going to play on a fill, four sixteenth notes. Then we're going to do an eighth note and two sixteenths on the high tom, four sixteenths on the mid tom, and then an eighth note and two sixteenths on the high tom, I mean the floor tom. So, four sixteenth notes are and then if you have an eighth note and two sixteenth notes, it's like so we'll go Kind of like that, the fill would sound like that rhythm. Alright, so I'll demonstrate it for you right now.